Good afternoon and welcome to MOS Live. Today we're talking with Museum of Science educators about sound. My name is Emily, my pronouns are she, hers, and I'll be keeping an eye out for all of your observations and questions today. If you're watching on Facebook, please use the Zoom link in the caption of the video to share your observations and ask questions. If you're here on Zoom, just press the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Don't forget to include your name and age if you'd like a shout out. If you'd like to see captions, you can click on the closed captions button at the bottom of your screen and select show captions. I would now like to invite my scientists to introduce themselves and we'll get started. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Janine and uh, we're going to be exploring sound and one of the things I love about sound is there are so many different ways to explore it. Um, you can do it with everyday objects um, and you can even think about some of the different uh, ways we understand sound, our biology and even just the physics of it, how it moves through the air. So we're going to have a lot of fun today. I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Sue. Thanks Janine. Well, welcome back, Science in Action fans and any newbies we have with us today. Um, I'm Sue. I normally work in the live presentations department at the Museum of Science. My pronouns are she and her. And today, we, as Janine indicated, we're going to be exploring one of my favorite subjects to talk about, which is the science of sound. So we'll start out with a, a few science fundamentals to do with sound. Uh, we're going to move over to Janine, who has a great activity that you can do to explore shaping the sounds you make with everyday objects most of you will have in your home. And then I'll return briefly with an idea for a great little sound toy that you should be able to make also with some materials you have right at home. So I'm going to start right off with this kind of interesting gizmo I have right here. I'll describe it. It's basically a long hollow plastic tube, has a little uh, speaker, so to speak, on one end, covered with ridges on the outside and on the inside. We refer to this little item as our whirly tube. And by moving air through it, we can actually create some sounds. As the air moves through the tube, it hits the ridges, kind of slips and sticks, and that sets up a vibration. So I'm going to make a sound with it, and we'll see if you can hear it. Kind of a low, whistly sound. Now, we're going to use our science skills today as well, of course. So we're going to use the information we get to try and make some predictions about what will happen if we change something in the way I'm using this tube. So if I tell you that I'm intending to spin this really, really, really hard, would you expect the sound to get louder or softer? Or would you just expect it to get higher or lower or maybe, maybe both? If you could type one or two words into your response and then we'll give it a try. We have higher, lower, louder, louder, higher. <laughs> a little bit of everything. <laughs> well, lots of predictions, but you seem to be on the right track. So to know about sound, we have to know that it's a form of energy, right? And the more energy you put into something, the more you kind of get out. So it's a good prediction that it might get louder and maybe it would get higher. Um, we're going to give that a try and see what happens. OK, so here we go. Here's where we were before. Kind of a whispery little whistly sound. Now let me get it spinning a little faster. So for those of you who predicted it might get a little higher and a little louder, you seem to be on the right track with that. So when we're talking about sound, first of all, we have to talk about the energy going in. Second thing we talk about is what it's traveling through, the medium, and then to perceive a sound, you need a receiver. In the case of our whirly tube right now, our first receiver is of course the microphones um, on our computers, but eventually it ends up in our ear and that vibration moves into our ear, moves our eardrum, and that's when we perceive sounds. Now basically the way sound moves is two different ways, sort of in a wiggle and a wave. So as that energy moves through the air, for example, that's our medium in this case, we get the molecules of air moving back and forth. And they bump into the next molecule of air and get it moving back and forth, which bumps into the next molecule of air and gets that moving back and forth. So each individual molecule of air is wiggling, but you notice the sound is moving as a wave through the air overall. Okay, 
Let's do one final prediction. I am going to move this as hard as I can. I'm going to whirl it through the air as hard as I can. Once again, you guys, louder, softer, higher, lower. See how it does if I can whirl this as fast as I can. We have loud, high, louder, very high, higher pitch. But you higher, guys louder. are taking the the data you've already gotten from my previous two tests of this sound toy to predict what's going to happen with that final twirl. So here we go, starting low, medium, and now let's see how fast I can spin it. How much energy do I have today? Awesome prediction, you guys. Brilliant job. So now I'm going to pass you off to Janine, who has some great activities to do, and then I'll be back with you for our sound toy a little bit later. All right, that was awesome, Sue. Welcome back. Uh, yes, we are here in my dining room and I just wanna check in with Emily. Can everyone hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay, just, just wanna be sure. And we're gonna be exploring sound, uh, ways to make sound and ways to change sound. And we're gonna be using two household items. I've got here a wine glass and a straw. So these are the two things we're gonna be using. And um, we're gonna be using them separately, or we could use them together. Um, but I want you to think about ways you could make a sound with just the wine glass, and ways to make a sound with just the straw. So think about the wine glass first, because I bet a lot of you have experience uh, making sounds with glasses. So if you have a thought about how I can make a sound with a wine glass, go ahead and type it in the Q&A box share it with your friend tap the glass on the table smash it hit it blow into it over the rim yeah. um smash it bang it blow air into the glass mm, uh, around the rim okay yeah those are great suggestions we've got sort of tapping it i could go around the rim um i heard smashing it that would definitely make a sound but then i wouldn't have a glass to do more experiments with um so I'm gonna tap it so you can hear that again. And then I'm gonna do the around the rim technique that I think some of you are describing. And I want you to listen to the two sounds. Are they the same? Are they different? All right, so we'll use a spoon so we can get a good, good tap here. Okay, around the rim, here we go. So friends, how would you describe those two sounds? Are they the same? Are they different? And if they're different, what's different about them? They're different. Um, there's some people saying vibration. Awesome, yeah, they are slightly different. You know, one way you could think of it, I hit it with a spoon, we set up vibrations in the glass and eventually, of course, it stops. It's kind of a quick sound. Now you might notice, of course, if I rub this, the sound is more continuous, sort of a ringing sound. All right, so we're gonna get back to our wine glass in a second. So we know we have two ways we can definitely make a sound with the wine glass. What about the straw? I bet some of you have been noodling over how I might be able to make a sound with a plastic straw. If you've got a suggestion, go ahead and, go ahead and share it. You know, one of the things we need to remember is we have to get something vibrating, wiggling. Um, so we have to figure out how to get the material of the straw to wiggle back and forth to wiggle air molecules. All right, Emily, is there any suggestions out there about how I might be able to make a sound with a plastic straw? We have a lot of blowing into it. You could flick the straw, um, split it in half. Yeah, I can definitely tap on it and it does make a small sound. And I like the idea of blowing on it. We just saw Sue with the, that whirly tube thing that it was a tube that we got air to move through and it made a sound. So we can try blowing through it and see what happens. Here we go. 
bit of a sound. I'm just trying to make a louder sound. And I have a way I'd like to share with you um, that I know a sound that will make a pretty loud sound with this straw. So I've got my straw. I also have a pair of scissors. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip the very top of the straw. I'm gonna cut two little pieces of straw off. So I end up with sort of a little notch at the top. It's kind of pointy. You can see that. And now I'm gonna flatten it with my teeth and my fingers just a little bit, right around where I've cut. I'll show you real good so you can get a good view of that. So I flatten it out just the slightest little bit. And yes, I'm gonna blow into the straw. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Definitely a loud sound, right? All right, so we now have ways we can make sounds with our two objects, but I think we're ready to change the sounds they can make. And, you know, we just saw Sue, you know, twirling that tube at different speeds to make different sounds. Well, I can't really twirl my straw, but I still do have my scissors. What I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna cut off a part of the straw. So we're gonna have less material. We have a shorter straw. How do you think that might change the sound the straw is making? Go ahead and share a thought if you've got one. To I... make it louder or higher. Yeah. A lot of higher, higher pitch. A higher pitch. All right. So let's see what happens. Let me get myself ready. Scissors ready, get my lungs ready. I've got to blow pretty hard here to get the straw vibrating in just the right way. Okay, I'm gonna snip off part of it while I'm blowing through it. Get ready to listen in three, two, one. <laughs> Yes, they did. Yeah, yeah it, got, it got higher. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna continue to blow through the straw and I'm gonna snip and snip cut at least two more times. And we just saw it get higher. Make another prediction. What do you think is gonna happen as I continue to shorten the straw? Make it higher. It'll get higher, even higher. It'll keep getting higher. Yeah, I mean, based on the evidence we have, that's what should happen, but let's test it out. All right, here we go. <sighs> The straw sound got higher and higher. The less material we had, the faster that material was able to wiggle and the pitch reached our ears and it was much higher. So you can try that yourself. You can experiment with straws. Um, I bet some of you can come up with a way to make a lower sound by adding material in some way. All right, so let's get back to our wine glass. We had tapping and we had rubbing and that rubbing thing, I find really fascinating. What my finger is doing is slipping and sticking and slipping and sticking and slipping and sticking. And that's setting up the vibrations in the glass. As those vibrations move through the material of the glass and the shape, well, those vibrations play off one another. As they play off one another, the glass moves in this really special way we call resonance. So the glass re resonates. And we get this beautiful ringing noise. I think we're ready now to change the sound the glass is making. So I've got more glasses with 
with water. So we've got our empty glass. I'm gonna put this on the side. And we've got one with a little bit of water and one with a lot of water. So I want you to make a prediction about how you think the sound is gonna change from the empty glass to the glass that's got a little bit of water. Do you think the sound's gonna be higher pitch, lower pitch, the same? Share those thoughts. Um, we have some predictions for lower, a couple for higher, maybe a medium pitch as well. Okay, yeah, well, let's test it out. So I'm gonna do the empty glass first, then I'll move to the next one. There's a little bit of a difference, but not much. Maybe slightly higher. Now, we should be able to hear some difference in this glass, it's got a lot of water. Because now our vibration is not only moving through the glass and the air, but we have glass, air, and a little bit of water here. We've got glass, air, and a lot of bit of water on the end. So let's give a listen to this one. What do you think might happen between this one, this one, whoops, and this last one? We have a couple of predictions, both for lower and higher. Yeah, well, let's, let's give a listen, see what, what we think. Yeah, it is really different. Um, it's a little bit of a lower pitch. Okay, I've got one more thing. And I want to show you. I'm curious what you think. This glass has sand in it. So we've seen that our sound vibrations can move through glass and so move through air, move through water. Do you think they're going to be able to move through sand? And how do you think that might change the sound? Now, the sand's got a lot more material there. It's much denser than the water. So if you have a thought about how it might change it, go ahead and share it. We have some predictions that the sand will muffle the sound. It'll be a lot lower or no sound at all. Um, some that it might be higher. Yeah, I mean, we gotta test it out. This is kind of a, a situation that maybe most of us, you know, most of us, we don't usually put sand in wine glasses, but this is science, so we get to try it out. All right. So we've got our empty glass, we've got our water glass. We've got our sand. It still makes that vibration, but I'm gonna even add some more sand. And let's see what happens. My bucket of sand. And definitely, I think I've got a lot of sand in here now. Let's see what happens. I don't know if you can hear that. It's sort of squeaking. We're not getting that those vibrations anymore to make that ringing, that ringing sound. Definitely the sand has dampened it. Those sound waves are getting absorbed by the sand and well, that sound isn't reaching our ears anymore. So at some point, we've got too much sand to make those vibrations. Now, you can explore sound in lots of ways. You know, wine glasses are fun, but there are lots of other materials. Use coffee cups, put water in there in different amounts and tap on it with a spoon. See what kind of vibrations you can set up and what kind of sounds you can reach. By changing the material and something else about it, with the shape, the size, you can do lots of experiments with how sounds can change. So I'm gonna hand it over to Sue, who's got one more experiment for us about changing sound. 
Thank you, Janine. Oh, I love those experiments with wine glasses. And who knew you could get so many different pitches out of one silly plastic straw? Well, we're going to wrap up with a easy to make science toy that you can all try at home with everyday materials. So let me just show you what goes into it. Don't worry if I seem to go by a little quickly. We have a slide at the end that you can take a picture of and that will give you the list of materials if you do want to try this at home. So basically what you would need is a scissors, a roll of tape, a paper clip or two, some ordinary sponge. And what we'll do is we're going to cut a little rectangle out of our sponge and soak it so it squishes quite easily. You're gonna need a roll of string because you're gonna take off about a foot, let's say two and a half feet of string to be safe. And one of the final things you will need is an ordinary plastic cup to start with. All right. So I have partially assembled this one to show you how it went together. So we took our two and a half feet of string and made a little hole with our scissors in the top of the cup. This is definitely something you might want some grown up help with. It can be a little hard to make that hole. And then this end of the string we tied to the paper clip and that's to keep the paper clip from being pulled through the hole because we'll be pulling on the string in just a little bit. Now, what we have to do with the sponge, remember, is soak it first before we do the next thing. That is basically so we can take the other end of the string that's attached to our cup and tie the sponge on nice and tight in its middle. When the sponge is dry, it's pretty hard to tie it like this. All right, I'm going to double knot it so it's nice and secure. All right. And now we're ready to make a sound with it, okay? So remember to set up our vibration as Janine indicated and as we did with our whirly tube, we have to make a little slipping and sticking with our string. So that is what the wet sponge is for. It gives me a little grippy wet bit to put along the string and it will slip and slide with that slipping and sticking along there. Let's see if we can make a little sound with it. Could you hear that? Anybody want to describe that sound? So pretty, yes? We could certainly hear it. It sounds like a zipper, even a dog barking. It sounded kind of scratchy, a little squeaky. Yes, it's a wild sound. Now basically we set up the vibration using the string, but the shape of the cup, that big hollow area actually amplifies the sound, makes it a little bit louder. So we just went along the string without the cup. You could try this experiment yourself. You will hear a sound, but it's not nearly as impressive as the sound bounced around inside the cup. Now I'm gonna show you one that I've totally completed. Uh, one material I didn't mention is adding a little bit of colored paper and turning your cup into what I like to describe as a squawking parrot. So you can make a whole flock of these, maybe use different containers um, to get different sounds from them. So here we go. I've got my little bit of sponge. Let's put it on the string and let's see if I can slip and stick this so that we get more of a squawk that sounds almost like a cranky parrot. What do you think? Parrot? Duck? I'm not sure. We have a lot of dog barking sounds or goose. It does sound a little goose like to me and uh, I would think through the computer it would sound a lot like a barking dog, kind of yappy. So you can use different containers. Remember you'll get different sounds from them. Uh, you could use different size plastic cups. If you're holding it kind of edge to edge like this and you have small hands, maybe you want smaller cups, a little easier to hold on to. You can also try coffee cans or larger cans, smaller cans, see how the sound changes. In fact, you could create a whole flock of squawking parrots that your grown-ups will love hearing all day long while you shelter in place. And now I'm gonna open up to questions for both Janine and I, if you have them. All right, I have one to get us started from 
Uh, Juliet and Henry, age 11 and 6, how does sound travel differently underwater than through the air? Yeah. That's a really good question. Yeah. Do you want me to go for it, Janine? Sure, go for it. Okay. So one of the general rules that we say about uh, sound is, of course, that it has to travel through medium. So it can be air, as when we hear a sound in our ears, but of course it can travel through water and it can also travel through so solids. And a general rule is, if the molecules of that material are densely packed, that sound travels a little bit better through those things. So it travels pretty well through air, it travels even better through water, and it travels even better through solids. But there's a caveat to that. It's impacted by a lot of different things. The temperature of the material, whether it's elastic material, kind of stretchy and comes back into shape easily, how dense the material is, and even the kind of bonds the molecules have with each other can affect how that actually works. All right, so we have a few more questions. Um, one from, hmm, there's so many good ones. Oh, here's one from Nick, age nine. This one is about how sound and light are both waves. Can sound interact with light? Ooh, can sound interact with light? Well, the interesting thing about sound waves and light waves, they move at very different speeds. Uh, you know, sound waves move much more slowly than light waves do. And even if they're made by the same substance, so like a lightning bolt makes both light and sound, um, those two waves don't interact with each other, but they do start in the same place and then propagate through the air, um, but just at much different speeds. Um, yeah, so that's an interesting thought because they're both waves, but they don't like, like you think about like physical waves, like ocean waves, and you have an ocean wave that starts, you splash, and then the ocean wave from over here comes, and another one over here, and they kind of bounce off one another. Um, sound waves and, and light waves don't sort of ricochet off one another or bounce like that. All right, we are just about out of time, and I want to make sure I can share the slide with everyone about how to make your own squawking parrot at home. So I'm so sorry if we have some unanswered questions still, but we are out of time. So I would like to go ahead and invite my presenters to wave goodbye. Bye, friends. Thanks for joining Bye. us. Thanks for coming. And I'm going to share my screen so you can see how to make your own squawking parrot at home. So to check out more programs, visit the website mos.org slash mos at home or follow us on social media. And while you're there, don't forget to show us your own experiments with your squawking parrot sound toy and go ahead and ha use the hashtag mos at home so we can see those. Thank you everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next time.